Welcome to Spooktober with the Conspiracy Outpost. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the paranormally activated ranch in Utah. Stories ranging from aliens to spirits. Join us as we dive into the unexplained and the frightening events of Skinwalker Ranch. I'm your host, Casey. And I'm Jinx Joe. No, so uh, Skinwalker Ranch, it's located in uh, Unitah. Is that how you say that? But uh, yeah, so uh, the property is 512 I'm, I'm thinking, acres. I'm thinking Uinita. Uinita? Uinita? I think. Ointa? Unimportant. It's in Utah. Um, <laughs> that's all you fucking need to know. Closest town is Ballard. You can find the county yourself if you really want to. But anywho, uh, the ranch's property, it's 512 acres. And uh, yeah, it's uh, from, so let's, uh, let's see. So we had, we've had a few different owners of the ranch. It went from, uh, in 1934 to 1994, it was owned by Kenneth and Edith Myers. And then they sold it to Terry and Gwen Sherman in 94. Four, and they owned it until 96 and then from well they sold in 96 to Robert Bigelow and uh, he owned it from 96 to 2016 yeah and uh, this, this thing's saying it's pronounced Uinta that works Uinta that work. yeah that's, uh, that's I thought this, it, uh, it sounds how to native pronounce native. website uh, how to pronounce pronunciation dictionary is pronouncing Uinta. it Uinta I don't but, know if you guys uh, can hear it because it, it's probably. Oh, dude! <laughs> the like, the current person who owns it. Did you say that just now? I was about to. Is uh, Brandon Fugel with the uh, Adamantium Real Estate LLC? Got them Wolverine claws. <laughs> Skinwalkers. So when Brandon Fugel when he took over, um. They uh they shut all the roads down leading to the ranch. They uh the perimeter was guarded by cameras and barbed wire and signs were put up to to get people to not go there to make them so they don't want to approach the farm or the ranch anymore. Sorry, not farm. And uh, <clears throat> we'll let you know why. Well, 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 actually, I don't even know why, but well, I mean, we know why, but he's not going to tell you why, but we'll tell you why. You'll see. There were some aliens up in that house. I don't know. How do you say that, though? That that you were to get? I think, I think it, they said it's Uinta. Uinta? Uh, so, Uinta what? Pronunciation dictionary. Uinta Basin. 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 I don't know. Basin. I mean, yeah, so. I don't know Uinta, what that is, but I might be into it. <laughs> Uinta Basin. <laughs> Uinta Basin, home of the raisin. <laughs> Where your testicles are grazing. I was gonna say the UFO reports in the Uinta, Uinta is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah, Uinta. Uinta Basin were uh, publicized in the 1970s, and then the ranch first popped up in reports in 1996 in Salt Lake City, in uh, one of their uh, news stations there, and then it ended up popping up in the Las Vegas news station as well in a series of articles by an investigative journalist called George Knapp or Knapp yeah Knapp Knapp George Knapp (laughs) no um you went to you went to dude the the name of this place if it's heard like out of context it sounds like you're asking someone if they want a free base (laughs) Like, you oh, you, oh, I get what you were saying before. I didn't get it at first. You into uh, uh, Basin? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a proposition. So the ranch is bordering the Uinta and the Aure Indian oh. Reservation? Aure? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, Indian Reservation. Yeah. It was uh, popularly known as the UFO Ranch due to its 50 years of history 
of strange events. There have been cattle mutilations surrounding the area for decades. When uh, the National Institute for Discovery Science founder Robert Bigelow purchased the ranch and uh, for $200,000, it was a result of him being convinced of the stories and mutilations and tales of strange lights and unusual uh, impressions made in the grass and soil and stories told from the former ranch owner, Terry Sherman. Dun, dun, dun. Some of these stories include, well, actually, there's uh, been eyewitness accounts and investigated evidence for close to 100 incidents, including vanishing or mutilated cattle, sightings of UFO or orbs, large animals with piercing eyes that they say was unaffected by bullets, um, werewolves, invisible objects emitting destructive magnetic fields, zombies, demons, ghosts, you name it, this place has it. Aliens? Shh. We got them. So you're telling me that this place is essentially like the fucking house from Courage the Cowardly Dog? There's all this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Nowhere, or whatever the fuck it was called. You know, what if that show was based you on this? good for nothing, dog. So the ranch gets it. I don't know if I said this, but the ranch gets its name. The ranch's name comes from it. Sorry, I thought there was a bug on my bike. There's a what? spider. I thought there was a wolf spider on my bike, but it was just me tweaking. No, it was I just, it was just pubic hair from your mom. It was just uh, your no, mother's but... pubic hair, Casey. But the name, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the name is taken from the Skinwalker. It's coming from the Navajo legend of Skinwalkers concerning vengeful shamans. But I don't know if I said that already or not. Who the Might fuck have. pisses off a shaman? Like, why would you do that? Anybody who builds on an Indian burial ground. Oh, for well, my the, personal, oh yeah, there's, there's that. For my personal experience. They moved the head. Oh, it's moved, actually cursed land, actually, is what it was. Because yeah, they was moved the headstones, but not the graves or something like that. They moved the graves, but not the bodies. I was going to say, for my personal experience, like, I've pissed off many shamans uh, just disrespecting ancestral skulls, whether you're using them as a chalice, skull fucking, whatever you really get your hands on. <laughs> I apologize. Told no, that. but I guess, I guess the... Uh, oh, these are our Native Americans, by the way. These are uh, rich um, Quakers. <laughs> I don't know what Quakers... I forget what Quakers no, I, are. I guess, I guess the youth are, put a uh, white curse right? on the land. And even the uh, the Navajo people, they won't go on the land because they know it's cursed and their legends and history and all their their beliefs. So does but, it just attract UFOs because of that? Possibly. We don't, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not an expert in the. You're the expert, the Casey. You're the expert. Let me let me tell you a story about a uh, old Terry and Gwen Sherman. Those are the uh, the owners before they sold to Robert Bigelow, Mel Gigolo. Mel Gigolo. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um. So so when Terry and Gwen when they moved into their house and they started to settle in, um. Just just this is like shortly after moving in, they uh caught a sight of a fearful animal. It was perhaps a wolf or a coyote stalking towards their livestock pen when it snatched up a calf in their jaws. Terry fired at it with his handgun. <laughs> Didn't do shit. Took his rifle out, shot at him. Didn't do shit. Um, the creature just waltzed away back into the butch, uh, bushes, and they said it had a foul stench like rotting flesh that they... Uh, so that stayed with them like after like you know like it like it lingered around in their like subconscious basically you know like so this was a zombie wolf type yeah type I was deal? like what the fuck is it zo- a zombie werewolf is, is that <laughs> what we're talking about here How are know? we yeah. talking about some wolf creature that doesn't like to clean the blood out of its fur and smells like a dead body or the fucking zombie wolf and it's like if it scratches you what do you turn to a fucking zombie or a wolf we're both a wolf a wolf wolf no, uh, but the weeks, the weeks and months that followed, uh, visitors to the ranch reported seeing unidentifiable beasts moving in the woods and letting out roars. 
and then there were lights hovering and zipping about the sky, including large orange circles and blue spears that flew around, as if directed by unseen forces. Most disturbing, uh, most disturbingly, animals on the ranch began to die in grotesque ways. Some of their dogs were seemingly incinerated in the night. Cows were found dismembered in a cord out way with a surgical precision that ruled out attack by coyotes. Did you say fucking incinerated? Yeah, incinerated. So <laughs> predators out there? Yeah. <laughs> that, that that's, that's the that alien shit scared, right there. Come scare on now. people off or to attract more tourists, they fucking run around with homemade flamethrowers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to know how incinerated do they mean. Do they mean like they went out there, there's a pile of dust and a couple bones, be like, Fluffy? Or I like... <laughs> I can just imagine all of us going out there, like the fucking visit it, and then in like the middle of the night, fucking alien like UFOs start fucking shooting down, and then fucking werewolves are coming out of nowhere, zombies, fucking ghosts. It's like the fuck is going on? Fucking time machines popping out of the goddamn ground. <laughs> like, bro, okay, like the other. God the damn it! Cattle- I just wanted to eat some spores and drink some beer. <laughs> the God. cow mutilation oh. is also a UFO thing, but like. They incinerated they their dog. Weird beast and then flashing lights, which I guess, I mean, I guess it's not that random if you kind of think of it like uh, aliens bringing weird alien like What if creatures. the aliens are picking up just random animals and putting them together <laughs> like chimeras? It's, what if like, it's like an alien that kid. Is like, weird, right? A chimera? I don't fuck A what? I don't chimera, even know what that is. Like a mix of two chimeras. Chimeras, they're like a, they're a mixed with like, um, they're mixed with fucking a couple of different animals, I'm yeah. pretty sure. I, I just can't remember oh, the fuck. I was gonna say it's just some alien kids. Like it's like the equivalent of us like getting spiders and scorpions and stick them in a jar to see who wins. You know that's what Except they're doing. These aliens are a, fucking like on a planetary new, scale. New creatures. They're like, they're like, oh dude, check this out. I went to planet Woof and uh, I found me a wolf person. And uh, this guy's like, oh, I went to fucking planet goddamn science land and I got this Frankenstein creature. Let's let's okay. uh, let's throw them out there and see who wins. In Greek mythology, Chimera is a fire-breathing female monster with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a serpent's tail. So yeah, it's like a mixture of fucking animals. I knew there was a lion thing involved with that, and I was like, "Or is that a griffin?" And I guess they both are because don't griffins have like lion shit? Yeah, I don't know. I thought a Chimera was just a like a mixed animal type thing. I don't know. It could like be to just define, that, that was just like the Greek, uh, the Greek mythology animal. I mean, maybe it's yeah. used. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. I probably am. You're right. <laughs> I mean, Google's right. I didn't even know the fucking. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know what else it means. It's just the first thing popped up uh, in Greek mythology. It's a uh, whatever. No, but this fucking ranch is a trip. <laughs> that that the instant yeah, uh... cattle mutilations. That's standard for either UFOs, demonic worship, what have you. But the fucking incineration, that's... Either there's some, like, fucking dragons out there, a crazy motherfucker with a flamethrower, or aliens. Okay, it's very simple. These aliens went to a different planet. Turns out there were zombie beasts. They got bit by them. They fucking started hovering in our fucking orbit and are only... They're, they're fucking... Their destination just sends them to this one spot right back up, this spot right back up. <laughs> like... They're just like, uh, they have a bunch of weird ass fucking beasts with them. That's just, that's just fucking nuts. Continue, Casey. I want to hear more. That would be this. a ridiculous movie, just like Sharknado, but it'd be zombie aliens from outer space. And it's like <laughs> these fucking aliens crashing their zombies. Zombie alien werewolves from outer space or zombie werewolves from outer space. Be like Sharknado, dude. We can fucking make a fat ass profit. We make fucking thousand movie, a thousand movies about this shit. There is a movie called Skinwalker Ranch. No, I mean, um, uh, zombie werewolves from outer space. <laughs> oh yeah. Fuck it. We can just turn it into a fucking audio series. So about the the beast that we were talking about this this werewolf like beast that we were. Um, we Same. already me, established the name, and it's called Zombie Werewolf from Outer Space. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good movie, like one of those cheesy bad movies. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, we uh, can make it like Sharknado, make a thousand fucking sequels, or we can turn to an audio story. Doesn't really matter. We got. <laughs> I mean, we we but, don't uh, have the equipment to make a movie, but what we do have 
is audio equipment to make it an audio drama. <laughs> Dramedy. You no, know, it would. It, we put Matt on some stilts because he's tall already. Like beef him up, put some hair on him. We got ourselves a dope ass werewolf. Yeah, an alien. Gonna say, Gumby. We make Matthew shave his head, and we'll have an alien. I was, I was, I was if I, my, if I shave my head and beard, my fucking head is alien shaped. That's I was just joking because Matthew's got like it's just weird seeing Matthew with short ass hair because he's always had like fucking long hair. And like when uh, when I first seen him with short hair, I was like, what the fuck? Because I haven't seen him with short hair since we were little kids. Yeah. And then I seen he fucking shaved it all off. And then I was just like, I used God, to shave damn. my head. That's what I always do. People are always fucking giving me compliments. Like, I wish I could do that, but my head lumps weird on one side or this and that. And that's like, I, I, I hate having know. short hair. Yeah. I mean, your hair looks good. You and Matthew have like fucking hella like cool hair and shit. My hair looks weird when I grow it out. And then I try to grow it out like to a certain length. It's all right. But it's like it gets to a bowl cutty like phase and I can't fucking deal with it. So I just shit. The it longer off. mine is, the better it looks. Hmm. Because it's yeah, curly, you got to wait to hold it down. If it's short, you would play it's, pretty it's good. Grows up. You could play like a, play like a pretty good like Greek <laughs> god or Greek king, or Greek homosexual. Either either well, of them. That's I, I every prefer, Greek figure. I prefer Viking. But, you know, <laughs> well, no Viking. Viking would work too. I was just uh, the way they portray Greeks in movies. They're always fucking like blonde and each other. <laughs> but in actuality, they're like olive skinned and probably dark hair, right? You think Greek people? Yeah, they. But they never do that. Yeah, and it's like even with fucking uh, Russell Crowe, Taika Waititi wanted to do a fucking whatever accent, and uh, Russell Crowe wanted to do a fucking like actual whatever accent and it fucking they did takes of both things and it sounded better the way russell crowe wanted to do it which was more accurate and then taika waititi it was so fucking glad that he actually went with that accent it's like yeah that's what they sound like don't sound like badass british people <laughs> that's my mom man <laughs> <laughs> dare i do it <laughs> all right um, that spiraled out. No, but I was gonna say with the uh, alien this... or zombie werewolf from outer space. You yeah, said you were the about zombie that. werewolves from outer space. And no, uh, I was gonna. Well, I was gonna say something about the ranch. That uh, well, because how we got to say well, the skinwalker thing. Uh, it comes from the Navajo culture, and uh, it's supposed to be malevolent. Uh, malevo- uh, malevolent. Malevolent. Witches who mastered the ability of changing into different creatures. The hulking wolf life beast that confronted the Shermans, which seemed to resemble a large, extinct dire wolf that used to prowl North America, as well as other creatures seen by the National Institute for Discovery Science. Observers have linked legends to the Skinwalker and in the regions. And for those that don't know, dire wolves, they're like regular wolves, only they're dire. They're in dire need of some wolf. No, wolves. fucking witches, I could believe. Fucking shapes. We were dire. We're dire wolves. Shifting or? and incinerating things. I could believe that. We're witches. And then cutting open cattle, getting ingredients, I'm guessing, for potions, spells. I don't fucking know. Wiccans. Mike, have you seen that little demon show? That's all I was going to say about it. I mean, that's a pretty good show. I have not. Uh, it's that new cartoon show. Danny DeVito plays the devil, and I think it's his daughter. Oh, that yeah, plays the daughter. I've heard of yeah. that. I've heard, I was, I was just thinking uh, witch because the mom's like a witch. It's uh, hmm. Audrey Plaza or Aubrey Plaza. Is it Audrey Aubrey, Plaza? Uh, Aubrey. Aubrey. Aubrey Plaza, yeah. She plays the mom. Oh, nice. Her character is my favorite, honestly. I don't know. She's just, yeah, a badass. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> the witch Opie. thing is kind of a cool fucking thing. Why do they call it Skinwalker exactly? Do we already cover that? Because well, there listen might in, be so. Skinwalker. Sorry, I'm having a hard time. There's a uh, well. I was gonna say there's a long-standing local legend linking the presence of Skinwalkers to hostile relations between the two Native American people, the Navajo and the Utes. In the words of historian 
Sandra Jones, author of Being the Becoming uh, Ute. The Navajo were more aggressive people. They took slaves. They had Ute slaves. And according to local legend, it's a ter- uh, territorial dispute led uh, the Navajo to curse the land and unleash the skinwalkers there. What the fuck are skinwalkers? Uh, skinwalkers like- are the the sh- like Vinsville shaman witch creature. Oh. Are they related to White Walkers? That was the, the game White there. Walkers. Ah, never mind. Squid Walkers are malevolent witches who master the ability of changing into different creatures. So, that's yeah, what they, they are. Yeah, they also possess and disguise themselves as Squid animals. Walkers. So they can possess them, too. They also, uh, they also say the ranch might uh, be home to an interdimensional portal. Oh, uh, hold on. So it's, it's it's not zombie werewolves from outer space. It's zombie werewolves from, from another, another dimension. dimension. That's interdimensional cool zombie werewolves from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> the the and, title uh, just keeps getting longer. And that will be our thing. No, it's got to keep getting longer. It's the only way <laughs> two, it's going to attract two anybody. brothers. Um, uh, fight <laughs> interdimensional <laughs> zombie werewolves from outer space, but that's not at all. They're also fighting a giant horde of killer bees. But if that wasn't enough for you, there's also a volcano erupting. <laughs> all right, guys, I already got the idea it's for for a conspiracy. Podcasters, they, they gain the funds through un, unknown means and they go to Skinwalker Ranch to shoot their pod, but they get really drunk as they do. And they're very relatable characters and they all got big dicks because that's very important to the males. I'm just kidding. Um, it's very important to the story. Yeah. But one of them has a micro dick because he never goes on the pod. He's on like every other episode and. It's not that irritating, but it kind of is. But, you know, whatever. He's still a cool guy. But, so they all fucking, they go and they're like, yeah, yeah, it's all whatever. It's bullshit. No, it's not. Oh, maybe it is. And they do their bickering. They do the bickering they always do. And the drunker they get, the more they bicker. And then a portal opens up. And what comes out of the portal? Interdimensional zombie. Wait, what was it? Interdimensional. Interdimensional zombie werewolf from outer from space. Outer space. <laughs> And then, yeah, they have to survive it, I guess. And then that's, you know, that's the, the movie. Maybe one of them lives. Maybe all four lives. Maybe that one of them. If your asshole was like a exit to a wormhole, like people are just shooting out of your ass all the time. Oh, and that's, that's, how, it, that's how it'll end, too. You find, you find out that you can close the portal if you can open a new one. And we choose the, and then we, we, uh, we choose which one of us has the tightest butthole to be the new portal. That way we can always. We need keep someone who can draw, so we can make crude cartoons. We do. I want an actual. I want. They an don't need to be like, like a bunch Asher. of frame. I was legit gonna ask. I was thinking about asking if he can uh, draw us up of a, uh, um, like a our own conspiracy outpost, like fucking picture that we can use for shit. Because I think it would be cool. For us to be in some kind of like rundown like fucking house, all doing something that's conspiracy related, like one person getting fucking sucked up from a fucking UFO thing. I mean, everybody's just like partying, but then other shits happening. Like one person's playing cards with ghosts or something. Another one's fucking I don't know, just doing fucking whatever. Somebody else is wearing a skull on their dick. You can't see their dick; it's just their pants are down with a skull on it, and a bunch of like. Uh, <laughs> actually, no, that would work. Somebody has a skull on their dick laughing. It's just them with their pants down and a skull covering it. And there's a bunch of like angry fucking spirits around it. Then then I'll, be, I'll be kneeled down, picking up some sand off the ground, putting it into a pouch. <laughs> but uh, I, I just thought it would be cool for the conspiracy fucking podcast to have like all four of us just like party it in some fucking like haunted abandoned shack and just like sci fi and paranormal shits all going around in the I fucking like the- thing all at once. I like the idea of spoofing King of the Hill as a yeah. drawing with paranormal shit in it. That that would work too. Something though that it's just I don't know. Something that'll catch people's fucking attention right away. 
be like, these guys are relatable. They're funny. <laughs> they get out information and they do it in a hilarious way. <sighs> Drum roll, so please. This, uh... Cunt. <laughs> 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 So this uh this this place that they say is the inter- uh, interdimensional portal, uh, several people have claimed to see a bright orange or blue light in the night sky. Um, they said this to uh, uh, la, 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 I uh, can't talk real quick. Hold on, let me. Oh shit! That would work perfectly for that. They said it's to last uh, around ten seconds. It can be viewed uh, around a thousand feet in the air. The uh, idea is that these odd creatures or spaceships enter and leave these connection points from a parallel universe or alternate reality, a plane of existence that exists adjacent to ours, but for some reason connects to ours only very occasionally and only in the night skies about the ranch, uh, above the ranch, I mean, in the northeast part of Utah. What are you going to say, uh, Joseph? Again, uh... Those lights could be UFOs, too. They're in the sky. Or there's, uh, UFOs that, um, they're just, like, watching are, the planet. Are they, they think it's fucking hilarious to, uh, send little beacon things to open the portal. Like the they, what color were the portals again? It's like a TV show. Uh, orange and blue, I believe. <laughs> Let me double check just to make sure. Oh, like the video game. Is that what these motherfuckers think it is? They see an orange and blue light up in the sky. They're like portals. I played it. I was there. <laughs> like, is that like it could be a fucking UFO and these motherfuckers be like portal. Yeah, but this was in like. 96 to 2016 was portal out there then. No. Uh, forms. Of I know it wasn't in 96, I'm- but I just wasn't sure if it was in this. 2000 somewhere. Oh, you know everything that happened in the year 1996, huh? Yeah. yeah. You're the fucking expert on 96? Is that your year? Is that the one you're picking? Yeah. Give me, give me, give me, a, give me a, give me a, give me a, give me a question Name a about 96. Name a movie that released in 96. All right. Name a movie, uh, a movie, yeah. Mike, that released that, in 96. Yeah, don't look it up. No. Yeah, I, I don't need to subject myself to these kind of tests. I, I don't need. I, I don't need to sit here and take this. <laughs> Jeez, this is funny. I laughed so hard at the fucking community thing when uh, when uh, Jeff yells at when Jeff yells at Annie, and it's like you're acting like a schoolgirl, but not the hot, but not hot or whatever, or but not the hot guy, whatever. And then she storms off, and then he like looks at everybody. It's so funny. He's like. I know what I said sounded, uh, it may have sounded uh, creepy, but, and then he just walks away. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so afraid for that movie because, um, they haven't, like, they have not for sure got, they, they for sure got, Lover needs to be in it. Yeah. They for sure have gotten the people that stayed in community to be a part of it. I've yet to hear anything from fucking. I haven't heard anything about the Allison Brie thing. Maybe she is, but like Donald Glover hasn't really said anything this year about it. Or I mean, this since they have announced it, and neither. Uh, well, no, the the person that plays Shirley, she's uh, she said something about her. She re shared the fucking thing or something, but she has not been tagged in any of the stuff that Joel McHale has been doing. Huh. And I felt like I felt like that's a little fucked up. Well, one of the things like it didn't show her like name in the thing, but he he uh, tagged Donald Glover in it, which it's like if it's going to be a true reunion, everybody needs to come back except for Chevy, Chevy, Chevy Chase. Ugh. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense for him to come back. And also, I, I heard that he was fucking super. I get I didn't know this part. I don't know if I brought this up before, but I guess um. He said racist shit to Donald Glover. Yeah, he said it's like people only think you're fu- uh, funnier because you're black. And it's like, what the fuck? No, the people think he's funny because Donald Glover's a funny motherfucker. Like, yeah, that dude is hilarious. A very talented. He man. was funny all the way back from bro rape days. Oh, yeah. Fucking the Derek comedy shit. Oh, man, I bet yeah. I'm going to start watching those again. Um, 
What's it called? I I'm, I'm looking jack off to this picture of uh, oh yeah of the fucking fruit. It's like, fruit. Doesn't even have a sexy orange in it. No, the funniest part in that video to me <laughs> is when Donald, when Donald Glover is waiting, sitting in the chair. He's like, "See, I knew you had no self control. Now go uh, put the <laughs> picture down. Go back to your room, so I can jerk off to it." <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, I'm the way he gets forward. in his face and he's like just talking so calmly. Yeah, just the way he fucking does it. So I can jerk off to it. Um, There's a I'm the, I'm the picture to... falls out of the window and they all three run to go grab it and there's just some old guy and they all put their hand on it and they all look up at him <laughs> and he Nobody just like smiles at him. Yeah, because he's like no one would think twice of jerking off to a bowl of fruit until they're told not to. Whatever. And then he walks off and he jerks off to it. <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to the new um because uh is it for Amazon? Donald Glover is doing a um Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV series, and I'm I'm actually looking forward to that. I don't know I don't know Donald Glover like when he does shit he puts like a spin to it that makes it fucking like uh, good. But I mean, it's his like touch like you can tell. Yeah. I don't know. I just fucking love Donald Glover. <laughs> love it. All right. Let's get back to it. <laughs> Let's get back to it. They also say that the events that happened over down at the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah is due to a collective delusion with the masses of people. Well, yeah, you didn't know that uh, on top of it being a um, sacred burial ground, it's also buried on a thick layer of fucking um, lead. Wait, is that the thing? Yeah, lead. That's a shit. Uh, or no, wait, wait, is it not lead? God damn it. Um, what is it? Mercury. It's on a thick layer of mercury. I butchered that. God damn. <laughs> no, there's hallucinogenic mushroom spores just in the air. <laughs> at all times. Yeah. Well, actually, it's a uh, fun fact. It's actually built on a giant monster um, mushroom, and every time it fires, it releases those um, those spores. What's that smell? I kind of think of like you know, like like on Days Gone, like where you had to clear out the hordes and stuff, and you go and there's like you know little spores everywhere and shit. Is that Days Gone? No, that's uh, I'm thinking that's of the, the last wrong of game. Us. Yeah, uh, you're you're thinking of, of, us, uh, of us, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say that one's more like whatever, like plant based kind of thing yeah and the day's gone is just straight up um actually that's what gave me the idea of that whole zombie thing i was thinking because they have not uh, the whole story but like how they have the advanced their zombies are more like evolved humans and shit like the evolved fucking whatever or the zombies are evolving which gave like cool ideas you guys know the walking dead show right um i'm just gonna say i was talking to my coworker who's been recently watching them again and I told him I thought the uh, CDC, uh, the CDC episode was boring. Are you about to, to talk about the newest season? No, no, no. This Nothing. was the from the first season. I thought like because to me the CDC episode was like boring and it seemed like out of place. Like it just seemed random as fuck, especially for towards the end of the fucking thing. And the fact that like Rick doesn't tell like anybody, like he's like whispered to. I don't remember what the guy whispered or if they even fucking whatever. You're all infected. Yeah, yeah, the whole fucking, yeah, and he doesn't tell anybody about that till after the fucking, um, after the fucking, uh, farm thing, but. No, it's cool. The, the thing that shot, me, that's why I shot him in the leg, to make sure yeah, he came it back. it doesn't make any fucking sense, because Rick's still like, oh yeah, I didn't really believe it. It's like, how retarded are you? But yeah, then I, fi okay, I never liked those episodes, like the CDC ones. I thought they were stupid. It, it didn't feel like it matched the rest. It felt like it was going from a kind of like a fucking like horror thing to a scientific whatever. And it's like, which is fine, I get, but it's like the the random luck of running into like fucking whatever this one guy, he explains everything, just lays out everything that's going on. Well, I then mean, I figured out more luck. They went, they went to the CDC. Oh, did they? I thought it was ran. Okay. Well, it's still, it just fell off. And then it like, it turns out Robert. Well, Kirkman he told him everything. Cause he was going to kill him anyway. He was like, well, we're all going to die in here anyway. Well, no, I'm just saying that all the, whatever it turns out, Robert Kirkman regretted uh, that episode out of everything. Because apparently season one, 
they didn't know how like it was going to whatever, like eventually Walking Dead found its audience and everything. But at first, they didn't know how well it was going to be like received. They didn't know what they wanted to do with it. I guess is why like zombies were turning knobs and grabbing things and shit, which wasn't a thing in the comics and stuff. And they got rid of it after the first and running. Season. Yeah, and they got rid of all of that after the first season because they finally started getting down whatever. But the CDC thing, Robert Kirkman, like, regretted. He said it didn't fit the tone of the show. And it's like, dude, that's that's how I felt. Like, I explained that, like, to my coworker about that. Like, I, I, were, I, I was trying to. I just told him it was boring, whatever he said. I thought it was, like, whatever because it gives you information about whatever. I don't think I got the chance to tell him why. I didn't because it didn't seem to fit. It was just to me, it was just boring. It seemed like it took a fucking dr- a drastic turn into like this whole science thing. Like, because when I first watched that episode, I thought the whole fucking tone of the show was going to change after that, which it didn't. It resorted right, reverted right back to what it was supposed to be. And it was almost like you didn't even need that episode the entire time, except for Rick's like, oh, yeah, I knew that. But I, it didn't affect my situations at all. It didn't affect anything. It literally affected nothing but killed one of the survivors and told you guys early on that everybody's infected. And they go about it a different way in the comics and everything. But, yeah, it just it felt hell out of place. That's why I didn't like it. And it turns out that's why Robert Kirkman didn't like it. Aside from that and the fact that they had zombies fucking doing out-of-character shit that they don't ever do in any other season. Yeah. Turning doorknobs. They're still kind of alive. Because they didn't know what target audience they were going to have. They were just kind of pulling yeah, strings at every fucking well, that was, that was walking, terrible. Walking back to the house that uh, the fucking homeboy's uh, wife lived at. Yeah, Morgan. Uh, what was his name? Morgan, Mor- yeah. Morgan's fucking whatever. And it's like, yeah, it was fucking hella out of place. Like, And that, that's how I felt. And then it was like, oh, yeah, it fucking it really was. And that's what, like, people would always say. It's like, well, no, that episode explained uh, what the zombie apocalypse was from. It's like, no, it doesn't. It just, it, it explained the basic shit that you probably would have already figured out later. And then when I read the comics, I was like, oh, this is such a better transition than the way that they did in the show. They just, hey, we're at the CDC, and they, they told us exactly what we need to know coincidentally before blowing up. And then now we're heading off to something else, and we'll never talk about this ever again. One time later, and the one guy that knew about all of it didn't believe it from a scientist. So, but I guess I mean that shit happens in real life all the time. So, but a, a, a redneck guy not believing a scientist, <laughs> fucking. No. But yeah, I just thought that was fucking crazy. Like it didn't. As you're as you're on a podcast talking about conspiracies, trying to debunk science. That's not a debunking science. There's no scientific proof that any of the shit. They're just conspiracies. Yeah, there's no scientific proof of anything. You're just going off of what you're told by somebody else. And so are so are conspiracies. Conspiracies are literally you going off what someone else told you. They seen happen out of place. It's all word uh, word to mouth shit. And then a bunch of other people are like, "Yeah, this happened. Yeah, this happened. Yeah, I seen that too." But except for there was lights when I seen it. Like it's all word. It, it's it's the same thing. You can't like it, it both, for lights. <laughs> I mean, because that's how that shit works. It always the story always fucking upgrades. It doesn't get like worse sightings as time goes on. The uh, the sightings always build up bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like yeah, I seen these weird beasts. Yeah, I seen weird beasts with fucking lights. Yeah, I seen the weird beasts and lights. There must be a portal at fucking whatever. I saw this weird yeah. beast, and I'm pretty sure he had some cock rings on. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. The story always gets fucking crazier as time goes on. Like, it's like it, you can uh, you can agree that fucking uh, like or you can dismiss something from somebody else saying that like, oh, yeah, but you only believe this because someone told you that. It's like, yeah, but you only believe that because someone told you that. Like, it's the same thing. Information gets spread around. You only believe what you want to believe from it. But when it, that's the whole thing about conspiracies. They're unproven things that a lot of people said happened somewhere, but can't it can't be proved. Or Let's get yeah, through this. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. This was no, I just I'm starting to yeah. fucking cough a lot. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, I mean, what do you, what do you guys? Well, I mean, we can 
I got through all my info and stuff. I don't. I was just trying to like leave room for us to talk and stuff. But oh yeah, we just break. talk about. Let's like, go to break. Thanks everyone for sticking with us here at the Conspiracy Outpost. If you like the way we spit facts and sip trash, then you'll love our segment. Conspiracy Outpost presents Feast and Famine: The Fall of Medenvard, our role-playing extravaganza. Join the slop tops as they venture forth in a land full of destruction and despair. Well, final thoughts. What do you think of the foreskin ranch, Joseph? I think what I always think. It, it's just all fucking word to mouth stuff. It's just that one person said they seen something. Another person said they seen something. I mean, maybe there's something weird living around or something, but I don't know. I don't really buy into all the uh, supernatural and yeah. sci-fi stuff. I, I buy into the supernatural and sci-fi stuff quite a bit. But this place... There's too much going on, too many different things going on that I'm just like, these, this, this seems like just a trumped up place, you know? Yeah, it's just like, like oh, there, shit, might, right? there might be ghosts or creatures, but like to have like all of it. I, I thought we were agreed that there were interdimensional <laughs> werewolves from outer space well that's 100% what's going on but I don't think for fucking years and years everybody's been seeing these things <laughs> <laughs> and I think they're 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 not as aggressive as people keep saying they are but yeah no people just going around fucking yeah I seen this and that yeah I seen two ghosts but fucking a fucking uh, werewolf all the fucking while well, aliens were beaming in on them watching <laughs> fucking insane <laughs> just beating off just beat them, but... and then you can hear them on the intercoms going, "Yeah, get them! Oh, it's gonna get them right there. Stick them." Regardless, if not all that stuff's going on, but there has to be. Well, there got to be something going There's on. There's something, but the I don't think like all of off, it. Like access to the ranch and guys, put it's, up it's and shit. Nobody ever. Oh, that that blocking off and stuff. That that's for. Uh, I think that's just for the lore. Nobody ever, nobody ever thinks of the fucking most logical thing. It's obviously a bunch of weird hybrid Amish Mormons that are tired of Taurus, so they're fucking uh, dressing like wild animals and scaring people because they're like, "This is our land." Oh, so this this is a Scooby Doo situation. Yeah, it's a Scooby Doo situation. It's one hundred percent a Scooby Doo situation. It's a weird fucking uh, cult of like a hybrid Mormon Amish community. The grocery store worker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin. Ishmael. Uh, how did you know it was me? Well, it was easy after we, when the animal left. We've seen wheel tracks from your wheelbarrow <laughs> you go around with. The gardener. <laughs> How'd you know it was me? It's the fertilizer on your shoes. Then you always smell like wolf pussy every time we see you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out there fucking wild, the canines. <laughs> No, like some of the stories, they sound like just a lot of the stories just sound like alien stuff. So I can believe it's just aliens, but that's about it. Or I can believe they give people tads of acid before they come out there. Or there put it in it's the like, water. hey, would you like a glass of water? <laughs> it's like, thank you. I'm, 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 I'm parched. I've been driving out here the whole way, and there's nothing to drink for miles. Yeah, and don't worry if like, you start yeah. getting a headache. That's what happens when you travel all the way out you here just, to drink water. You just hear a whisper. The, the people are like, there's nothing to drink for miles. And you just hear a whisper. Of course there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got, it's like, I'm starting to feel funny. What the water? What was that? Excuse me, what'd you say, sir? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, here, Here's some water. <laughs> here's some water. Ooh, I'm starting to feel funny. Uh, what's with this water? Yeah, it does, uh, I mean, all of our water is well water. I mean, it's it's got a, a bunch of fucking calcium in it. Everything's fine. Calcium? Oh my god, where cow? Where cow? Where heifer? Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Purple lights! Oh, yeah, it's aliens. Tell all your friends. He just got some lights like this, just the flashlights that he can't like, flashlights. Two flashlights wearing fucking, uh, fucking a pair of fucking bullhorns on his head, just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just in a fucking G string, just just in the woods. <laughs> Why are you wearing the G string for? It's the 
It's no one's like gonna believe you. <laughs> you wake Tell up what you saw. I want you to. And then they come back, and then well, they're like the instead of admitting they got raped by some like weird fucking scientist dude in the middle of the woods, they're just like, yeah, it was a I saw some fucking aliens out there. It was a werewolf and shit. Can ask because I've never took acid. I don't think anybody here probably. I have, has, I've, t- I've taken shrooms. That's about. I was it. just wondering if it, it can fucking seep in through your skin and cause hallucinations. Yeah, they can. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what I thought. And You've ever seen SLC Punk? There's a dude in there that they say that. I happens think there's to. an episode of fucking. Um, um, also, like at like prod- prodigal and shit, they'll put it in a water fun. bottle and they'll sp- you can spray yourself with it. I think there was an episode of Prodigal Son like that. I maybe mix up with something else, but ah, oh, that was such a great fucking show, and it got canceled. Fucking assholes. Mm. Um, that's the one with Jesus in it, great, right? Obviously. Yeah, he but, fucking okay, did yeah. that show. And, and, his, it was, and his father was yeah. Michael Sheen. Yeah, and that's it was your, such yeah. a great fucking show, and then it got canceled. Rotten Tomatoes get a bad review because they said it was too gory for no reason, and it's like it's a. F- Fuck, that's the point. It's a of serial the show. killer show. Yeah, it, but it's like you can't trust Rotten Tomatoes. People that only go off of fucking Rotten Tomatoes scores are fucking stupid. There wasn't enough representation in this movie. Two out of ten. Or two out of five, whatever they fucking do. Dude, the I haven't trusted Rotten Tomatoes since what they rated. What a half tomato? Since they rated. And I get Doctor it. That, Who, the Jody Whitaker's Doctor Who first season good. Mm. I was like, it was Yeah, not but good. they'll rate they'll rate shitty ass kids movies fucking <laughs> the best scores and shit. <laughs> It's too biased, and that's not like an attack when like uh, casts aren't like super diverse or anything like that. I'm not against that. I'm just saying they're super biased and sometimes can be super fucking woke about shit. Yeah, it's an all female fucking uh, powered fucking thing. Charlie's Angels. I don't know actually what they gave that movie. No, like with Doctor Who, it's not that she's a woman doctor. I actually think that choice of actress was amazing. I love her in Broadchurch, uh, and I expected a lot from Doctor. Who. From Chris Chibnall because of Broadchurch, and then he got onto Doctor Who and his sloppy ass writing fucked it up. That fucking cuck. Oh, they actually gave a uh, sixty-eight percent for Charlie's Angel. Oh, I mean, it's not. Film. I really Both like. Both Prado got two stars. Oh, okay, so it did shitty. Good. Yeah, the one with Lucy Liu, Drew Barrymore, and Cameron Diaz. Oh no, I'm looking for uh, the the remake one with um, uh, what's her name? Well, you got anybody got any more to add on Skinwalker Ranch? Um, no, aside from uh, we're going to do a fucking audio thing. <laughs> we should. Thing. We should do like a little audio adventure. That get someone to draw a couple funny. stills for it. Like oh, not fucking, animated, but like just pictures for certain parts. The 2019 film got fucking 4.9 out of 10. Okay. Well, anyways, yeah, Casey, would you like to take us out? Yeah. All righty, you guys. Thanks for tuning in to this. Well, it wasn't really too spooky, but spooktober episode of the Skinwalker Ranch. I am Casey. I'm Mike. And I'm Jack Off Joe.